When lure fishing on the drift over inshore reefs in deepish water of say 30 feet plus, the usual method is to lower the lure down vertically and either jig the lure close to the bottom for fish such as cod or retrieve the lure so many turns from the bottom for fish such as pollock. And this method works really well. However, when fishing shallow reefs close to the shore with depths up to about 30 feet, I find fishing vertically is not so productive. A kayak, of course, has much more stealth than a boat. However, there has to be a limit to the depth of, of the water whereby you can just lower the lure down vertically, working it under the kayak without any concerns that the kayak will put the fish off, particularly older, bigger and wiser fish. When working shallow reefs, I like to use a different method and the following is an example of using this method on a recent trip fishing over very kelpy rocky ground. Okay I'm at my mark now. Now the method I'm going to use is to combine drifting with trolling. So first I'm going to drift over the over the rough ground and then cast the lures away from the kayak and then jig them back or just cast and retrieve and then when I need to paddle back upwind to set the drift I'm going to troll. Now that way you're always fishing and it'd be interesting to see which method works. So I've got a variety of lures with me. I've got a sluggo there rigged on a 16 gram weedless jig head and a savage sandal rigged on a 16 gram weedless jig head. This is a 10, 10, centi 10 centimeter body on the 16 gram jig head. Got a savage sandal slug also rigged on a weedless jig head and also got a lure that I'm, I'm trialing out today whether I get to use it much is another matter but we'll give it a go and I think it's called a H2, H2O it's about 15-16 gram and again rig weedless because weedless is ideal when you're casting and jigging the lures back and will cut down on snags but I've also got non weedless soft plastic as well got a couple of plugs with me got a tackle house feed shallow 12A and a tackle house feed shallow 105 and I'm going to alternate with the lures. With the trolling, I'm probably just going to troll the plugs. But with the casting and retrieving, what I'm going to do is alternate with the soft plastics and the plugs. Right, first thing I need to do is deploy the drift chute. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to have the drift chute coming out of the stern. I've got an offshore wind at the moment, and by positioning the drift chute on the stern, what that's going to do, that's going to actually turn my stern into the wind. And then I'll be drifting. actually facing downwind and that's going to make it a lot lot easier to cast so just wait for that drift chute to open okay so we've got the drift chute set and we can start the start the fishing and the method I'm going to use, as I said earlier, basically I'm going to cast, I'm starting off with a Savage sand, um, Sluggo, which is on a Savage Sandal 16 gram jig head, rig weedless. And I'm going to cast it out. And this particular lure is very much, there's no real action to it, you've got to impart the action. So I'm going to cast it out and away from the kayak, ahead of me, I'm facing downwind and then jig it back to the kayak over the rough ground. I'm in about 18 foot of water at the moment and with the weedless I can work it right down into in right down close to the kelp jung jungle and work it at various depths down in the kelp ju just above the kelp jung jungle down into the kelp jungle and then and then mid water and just below the surface so I can try different depths. I want to jig it, jig this back. It'll be mainly single jigs, 
whilst you're turning the handle of the reel, but then sometimes a double jig. And I'll try and show you what action that gives later. The double jig really, really makes it look like a, like a sand hill. What's that? Going to get a lot, of, lot of little knocks from little pollock, but sometimes there's some decent pollock on this mark, on this reef, this rough ground. But mainly they're small. But occasionally you do, you do pick up a, a decent pollock. So he's just going to carry on like that until I finish the drift, and then turn round and then troll back and reset the drift. And when I'm trolling back, troll a plug. I'm trying to show you the action of this this sluggo rigged on a weedless jig head. If you you can see how much, and if I if I double jig it like that, you can see how much it looks like a real sandal in the water. And that's likewise the Savage Sandhill slug that also has a similar action. So they say I normally single jig, or sometimes then just give it a give it a double jig, just to put put a bit more life into it. You can see there on the fish finder the ground that I'm fishing over. All that light red mixed with a bit of yellow down the bottom there. That's all kelp. That, that's a kelp jungle, jungle down there. And it's mixed in with a, with a few rocks as well. Looks like a few fish showing there. Yeah, you can see that See that rising? Just come up there, that was probably a... a and going back down again, that's a fish. And coming back up again... That's a fish, and what that fish was probably had its eyes on was that patch there, which is probably a patch of sand hills. Up it comes again. Up, up, up. No, it's going back down. That's a fish, and sometimes you'll see that when uh, you're lure fishing, you'll see a fish actually come up from the bottom and, and go for the lure. But that down the bottom there, that's a kelp jungle. And, and that's where, hopefully, there'll be a few fish lying. Well, I'm into a fish. I don't know yet whether it's a bass or it could be a it could be a pollock. Yeah, it's a pollock. Actually, for this for this reef inshore reef, it's pre, it's a it's a pretty decent pollock. Why? Well, Immediately on the next on the next cast, I'm into another fish. I, th I think I think it's a I think it's a, a, another pollock, or it, it could be a rass. I, do I don't think it's a bass. It, it's not it's not banging it's not banging enough for bass. Oh, it's kicking a bit. It's kicking a bit now. Actually, it's a, yeah. This is a fairly decent. Yeah, it's a. It's a pretty decent. Pretty decent pollock. Yeah, that's a that's a really nice pollock for this reef, and we're only I'm only 100 yards from shore, but it is it is ideal pollock and, and bass ground. I mean, it's very 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 kelpy down there and rocky, and so it's, it's not surprising really that it does attract a few decent decent pollock, and of course there will be some decent bass at certain times of the year down there. And once again, that was caught on the the sluggo rig weedless with the 16 gram Savage Sandal jig head. And then, because it's fairly shallow water, normally I would just, if I was fishing for pollock, just vertical jig for them. Um, but I'm fairly shallow water, so I'm casting it away from the kayak, and then and then just jigging it back or double jigging, and the pollock will come up. Even if I work it just above the kelp beds the pollock will come up and hit it likewise will the bass 
first drift is over now so I'm going to paddle back closer to shore and set up the, set up the next drift and drift over a slightly different position and while doing that this is where I'm going to bring the trolling in that way I'm always fishing so I've changed the soft plastic for a a plug I'm going to troll a plug tackle house feed shallow 105 and when I troll what I like to do is make get the lure well away from the kayak now of course a kayak has got a lot more stealth than boat but even a boat than even but even so when you're paddling and you're creating a wake and of course I'm fishing in relatively shallow water so I cast it what I tend to do is cast it as far away as I can and then let out some slack and and try and get it at least sort of 60 yards 60 to 100 yards away from the kayak the other thing uh, to do is when you're trolling you usually troll in at about it's recommended to troll at about one knot one mile per hour so it's a fairly slow troll and that's all you need just 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 to paddle enough to get that lure working but of course I'm using braid and braid has got no given it I've got a 15 pound fluorocarbon leader so we've got virtually no give so when a fish comes along if you're paddling forward at one mile an hour and the fish comes and grabs that plug what I like to do is set set the drag so if it's a decent fish it can take a bit of line otherwise if it's too tight with the no give at all in the braid what I found is if you get a hook that uh, a fish that's only just lip hook sometimes it can rip the force can rip the hook straight out so just a bit of give just in case a decent fish does pick it up while I'm paddling forward so we're gonna paddle say paddle towards the shore troll in the plug and then reset up the second drift I'm just trolling the one rod of course you do have the option if you've got rod holders both side size to troll both rods two rods but it's easier for me to film just trolling the the one rod on the left hand side of the kayak the other the other reason is sometimes I find when you're trolling two rods and you do get a take and then of course you have to stop stop paddling and the kayak turns broadside and the lines can cross and you can get in a bit of a mess it'd be a lot easier if you had a pedal kayak where you can just keep gently pedaling and keep the kayak the kayak straight while you're playing the fish um, so most times sometimes I troll two rods but most times I actually just troll troll the one rod I find it far less hassle the other thing with trolling you'll notice there that I've rather than using this kayak has got the flush mounted rod holders behind the seat well you could use those and but the problem I find is that you're constantly then having to look back at the rod and it's all very awkward so what I find is really useful is to position your trolling rod holder forward of you so you're facing it but but out but well out of the way of the paddle obviously not too far forward that you can't reach it but out of the way of the paddle and you can see that I can very very com comfortably paddle without coming anywhere near the rod and it's set quite high as well so the paddle can actually go under under the reel and the rod there if I want to get a, a bigger stroke also likewise with the other rod holder on the other side if I, if I did fish two rods while I'm trolling I can put the rod in there and again I can paddle without without interfering with the rod and I find having your trolling rod holders forward of you is, is much much better than having them behind you when you can, you can see exactly what's going on just about to do the next drift and while I'm so close to the shoreline here I'm going to carry on with the plug for a bit and actually cast it towards the rocks into the very very shallow water and that often produces a bass the wind the wind today is, is pushing me away from the shoreline I, I like it I like it best when it's when the wind and the tide is running parallel to the shoreline and then you some you can it's much it's easier then to work very very close to the shoreline for a bit before you before you drift out but we're just going to use the plug for a bit and then when I drift out a little bit away from the rocks then I'll swap back over to the soft plastic one thing of course that's fantastic about kayak fishing is that you can access these spots now this particular mark here you can get get out to it for a short time on a on a spring tide and and work along the rocks here here 
but only for a short for a short time. Whereas, of course, with the kayak, it opens up it opens up all these marks where you can just drift along the edge here, casting your lure towards the towards the rocks, and work ground that's just not possible to work from the shore and a great asset a kayak and, and of course you can get into areas and close to close to areas that even the even the boats the small commercial boats can't can't get to apart from that it's, it's absolutely fantastic scenery to be looking at while you're fishing wonderful the wonderful cornish rocks there the Cornish cliffs, they, they really are a fantastic sight. When you're using this method of casting and retrieving or casting and jigging back to the kayak in relatively shallow water, the drift chute is an absolute must. By having it positioned, normally if I was just drifting and vertical jigging in deeper water, just lowering it straight down, I'd have the drift chute at the bow. But because when you're casting and retrieving, if you have it at the stern, it does exactly what you can see here. It, it positions me so I'm facing downwind, which so, so makes it much, much easier to cast. It means I can cast to the side here. I can cast in a semicircle around the, around the kayak. Downwind. And of course, and then I'm sitting in my seat and then I'm facing, I'm facing the lure, facing where I'm jigging it back. And it make, makes, makes life a lot easier. I mean, you can't use it when it's absolutely flat calm, otherwise you get virtually no drift or you just drift with the tide. But when there's a, when there's a bit of breeze pushing you, put the, and, you and you're adopting this particular method, um, have it at the stern, and uh, it, it's a real asset. Right, I could be into the... into the first bass here. This is on the this is on the cast and retrieve. Let's 
certainly it seems to, seems to be banging like a bass. Bit of head banging. No Pollock. But a good Pollock. Yeah, that's, a, that's a, an excellent pollock for this reef. And as you can see, what am I, 100 yards from the shore? Yeah, lovely pollock. Well, I decided to weigh this pollock because this is the best pollock I've ever had on this particular reef. And normally, they're quite small and this is a pretty decent one and it goes it goes just under six pound. It's probably about five, 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 yeah, about five and three quarter. So that's a lovely, that's a lovely pollock for this mark. Yeah, beauty. I caught a few more pollock, but on this occasion, no bass. However, Combining cast and jig or cast and retrieve with trolling over shallow rough ground is a great and productive way of fishing. Sometimes the casting works and sometimes the trolling works and it is a method I often use for bass and all being well will show these methods catching bass later this season 2015. If you have never tried this and tend to always vertical jig whatever the depth Give it a go in shallow water. Once again, I hope you found this useful and many, many thanks for watching.